Publishing. Who pays? One frequent criticism of open access is that advocates think publishing can be free, but that's not really the point. Traditionally, costs of distributing scholarly publications included printing and mailing and distribution. As we've shifted to more electronic formats, some of those costs have fallen by the wayside, but many of the traditional costs remain, including managing review and editing and formatting. And as we've shifted to electronic formats, some new costs have arisen, things like data storage and migration over time, and providing bandwidth to access the data. There are also some costs that are kind of hard to see, like paying for the time of authors and reviewers. And financial exchanges around publications have also often provided revenues for nonprofits like scholarly societies and profits for for-profit publishers. So acknowledging all of those costs, the question still remains, who pays? Different groups have paid for these costs previously. Many costs that publishers incurred have been paid by libraries through subscription fees, for example. But with open access, some of those payment sh schemes are shifting. Some institutions are subsidizing repositories or publications by hosting them. For example, Cornell University hosts Archive. Others subscribe or become a member of an open ac access project, providing ongoing sub financial support. For example, the University of Minnesota is a subscriber to Archive. Additionally, some grant funders are supporting open access projects, as the Simons Foundation here with Archive. But it's also true that with open access, some of these costs are shifting directly to individual authors in ways that they never have before. Both nonprofit and for profit open access publications often ask that authors pay fees up front to cover the cost of reviewing, editing, and formatting their articles. Authors with grant or other research funding may be able to use those funds to pay publication costs. Where grant funds are not available, the university provides the open access publishing fund. And increasingly, library funds pay for memberships in open access projects that result in reduced publication charges for University of Minnesota authors. You can see here, the University of Minnesota is a member of the Public Library of Science, and our authors pay less to publish in PLOS. So there are still costs, and they're sometimes being borne by people who didn't have to bear them before. But as the new models are emerging and evolving, one big hope is that overall costs may be less, especially as we reduce surplus expenditures and increase efficiencies. And ultimately, more scholarship will be more accessible to the world.